We made it through this storm. Amen. And any other storm that's coming, we have victory. <laughs> Would you turn to Hebrews chapter 1, please? And you begin to follow history all the way back when Satan was removed from his throne room. He had a fake throne room. I don't know if you knew or not. <laughs> it was an imaginary throne room in his head. And the Lord kicked him out of God's throne room. And he took a third of the angels with them. And his heart's desire was to always exalt himself above God. He always thought he could do a better job than God. You know, sometimes we, you wonder if God really revealed the fullness of himself to the powers of darkness because they would have freaked out if they really knew who he was. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, they would have been ripped apart. <laughs> but God allows things to happen because there's a specific plan. And, and, and in this plan, it's so much far greater than what you and I can comprehend because it's an eternal plan. That means a forever plan. And, and so in this eternal plan, there's got to be a temporary training. There's a temporary to enter the eternal. And so many times we get caught up in the temporary and lose sight at that place of eternal. We get caught up in our own desires and our own emotions, our own feelings and the things of our past and our mistakes and our victories and our everything else. The eye syndrome. What am I going to do with this life? And what's ahead? And whatever. And all of these things begin to bombard us and we get into a place of self-centeredness. And we begin to drift from our identity into reality. See, because one of the things that begins to happen is, and I've shared this before, that one of the things the enemy wants to do is steal your identity. If he can begin to compromise your identity or even steal your identity, you begin to drop from the true reality or drift from the true reality that is. And you go into the false reality. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1, God, who at various times, in various ways, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the worlds, who bring the brightness of his glory and the express, express image of his person, and the upholding of all things by the word of his power, when he he had by himself purged our sins and sat at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Various times and various ways God will speak to humanity. And now many times he speaks to us through an outward event. And now, of course, and he also speaks through his prophets. But now he speaks to us through the anointing to our inner man. And that really needs to be understood. He speaks to us through the anointing to our inner man. Because your inner man is what has fellowship with the Spirit. The Spirit has no fellowship with the flesh. In fact, he says, no flesh shall glory. Your new created inner man is what has fellowship with the Spirit of God. That's why you must be born again. That's why you get a new spirit. So in this, we know that there's an inner walk. And so many times I, I know that after my visitation from the Lord, after I'd been saved and delivered and healed and so forth, there was no other voice in me except for one. For a period of time and that one voice that I thought I knew it was my voice 
but it wasn't my words. It was different. See, in us, there's one speaker. And you must discern what's coming through that speaker. What voice are you going to allow? What are you going to accept through that speaker that's within you? And for a period of time, my thoughts were one voice. And then as things began to, relationship began to increase, that inner relationship began to increase. But then the outer began to increase also. Things began to manifest. So because of the inner determines what goes on in the outer. Is everybody with me? Go to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20. Again, God speaks to us through the anointing to our inner man. That's why when somebody first gets saved, they still don't have the inner voice yet, that inner relationship, because it's outer court. It's not holy place. So they're guided. They're mentored. They're tutored. Amen? They have overseers over them to guide them until that baptism of the Holy Spirit comes, which is the second chamber of the tabernacle. And then that innerness begins to begin to grow. There's a innerness with the Holy Spirit in relationship. There's a innerness and in fellowship between your new born again spirit and the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is called the anointing. Now, when you understand that the anointing is the eternal, eternal presence of God, power of God, and truth or his words of God. That's what the anointing is. When Jesus came in the fullness of the anointing, God's presence, power, words, and truth came. It was the anointing. A body was prepared for the anointing. When Jesus came, he was called the anointed one and his anointing, the Christ, means anointed one. So when, the, when you are baptized in the spirit of the living God, see, that's one of the things the enemy doesn't want people to do know that. He doesn't want them to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. People call on the Holy Spirit, acknowledge the Holy Spirit, but are not baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's a difference. There's an inner working, an inner relationship now. Why? Because that innerness is called second chamber of the tabernacle. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20, would you read it with me? But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Well, that's pretty amazing, because you personally don't know all things. But the Holy Spirit that has fellowship with your inner man knows all things. Hmm. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one, and his anointing. Remember that Jesus was the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty that came into this realm. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. If it abides where? Not outside of you, but where? Inside of you. This is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides on your head, in your head, in you, in your spirit. 
It abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. Now, do you understand that he calls the anointing him? Amen? Because the anointing is the Holy Spirit. He's the carrier of the anointing. Remember, it was the Spirit of the Father who is the Holy Spirit. Think about this. The Father thinks, amen? The Word speaks and the Spirit moves. The Father thinks, but they're all one. Amen? So the anointing abides in us, the eternal presence, power, and truth of, of God Almighty in the Holy Spirit. There must be fellowship with your Spirit and the Holy Spirit. It's an inner fellowship. Now, I don't mean that you can't talk to them, amen, because that's, but you're still inner. There's still that innerness. There's still that inner witness. It's within you. Now, when you have, you know, when people say, well, I heard an audible voice of God, but nobody else heard it. Well, if it was an audible voice of God, everybody would have heard it. But it was so clear within that it sure seemed like it was an audible voice of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Go to Matthew 16, verse 1. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing Jesus, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said to them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, if we, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, he says. You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. What was he saying to them? You can discern the outer world but not the inner world of the Spirit. See, there's the two worlds. There's the outer world and the inner world. <laughs> a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah, and he left them and departed. I love it. In other words, there's a discern, they can discern the outer world but not the inner world of the spirit. They were lacking what we call inner sense of discernment. An inner sense of discernment. Because when that inner sense of discernment is ignited, turned on, activated, there's that relationship. You are now in fellowship within. And in that, you know all things. You will discern. It's an inner sense of discernment. Now, think about this. There are senses on the outside. There's smell, there's taste, there's touch, and so forth. But there's an inner sense that discerns. I'm telling you, an inner sense that discerns by the Spirit of the living God because there's a relationship between your spirit and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit tells us, the anointing tells us what? All things. So many times people are not sensitive enough or discerning enough because there's a dullness there. There are things that are blocking them. There are things that cause grieving to the spirit. There are certain things that happen in a person's life or there's a place they haven't reached to. Maybe they're in and out of the uh, holy place in the outer court, inner court and outer court. And they can't, they can't hold that presence. They can't hold that inner sense of discernment. They just can't hold on to it. And they make emotional decisions all the time. Everything is frustrating. Everything is anxious. Everything is about me. See, their focus really isn't about being about the Father's business. It's about being the selfish business. So pretty Okay. Discern the outer world, but not the inner world of the spirit. They're lacking inner, the inner sense of discernment. In Romans 8, I start at 14. Now 
many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. So is that leading by the Spirit of God through the mind or through the Spirit? Does everybody understand it? It's not through your mind. It's through the mind of Christ. You're in a new spirit. In fact, the old mind, your carnal mind, doesn't even want anything to do with God. That's why you must be born again. And then things must mature. You know, it's just like, even Jesus, I mean, the, Jesus became, the anointing became flesh, right? It didn't come as an adult. Does everybody get it? He came as a child. He had to be taken care of by his mother and so forth and, and brought up. And, and then, of course, as he began to grow and grow and grow, I mean, even at the age of 12 and 13, he, you know, they, they lost him <laughs> a couple times. Where were you? I'm being about my father's business. It's not time yet. Come on. Maybe Mary grabbed him by the ear and said, come on, Junior. You know? But she still treated him like a son, a child. But he was God in a child's body. Think about that. You know? I mean, man, you know, let me out of here. You know? I want to bust out. You know? but, but in that, he allowed that the occur so that he could know what we went through. You got to remember, he's God. He didn't, he, he, he wanted to experience the human nature of fall. He wanted to experience what you and I went through. I mean, he could have just ended everything. But because his love, because his love, because we were created in love, and he wanted to know what the heck I want to be I want to know what they are. I want to know what they're like. I want to love them. But I, I, I can't love them the way they are. It's very difficult. I mean, God loves us no matter what. Amen? But there's an area where God wanted us to, he wanted to bring us to a place where he could understand us and have compassion on us. Remember, he killed everyone in the <laughs> flood. Amen? Amen? <laughs> How many times did he talk to Moses and say, man, I'm going to wipe them out. Moses said, no, Lord, don't do that. Not now. <laughs> but when Jesus came, things changed. But the chambers were opened. The veil was torn. We had access now. And there was an inner relationship available through the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, but some people get baptized in the Holy Spirit and still don't have that inner sense of discernment because it must be matured. It must grow. Hallelujah. Um, ver, uh, did we do uh, verse 15 yet? Okay, let's go for it. What is it? For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with what? Our spirit, not our head, not our feelings, not our emotions, with our spirit. The Spirit, the anointing himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. Is that identity? Yes. And if children, then heirs... Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, the anointing. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. That's when he says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. In us. Again, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit, our inner man, our new man, to confirm our identity in Christ. But again, if there's not relationship on the inner part, this is where your inner thoughts, your innerness, your, your communication, how many times you talk to yourself? Do you ever wonder who you're talking to? Hello? Did you ever hear that voice telling you, don't do that? Oh, you'd be talking to yourself, man, you know, I shouldn't do that. I wonder who's telling you that. 
Man, don't forget this. Hello, who's telling you that? Praise God. Go to Philippians 2, in verse 1 through 4. Let's speak it. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any what? Fellowship of the Spirit. If any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. In other words, maintain close, parallel thoughts with the Spirit of God. If we all had that inner, we would know. If we all had that inner discernment, that sense of inner discernment, we wouldn't be doing so many things that we do. But many distractions cause things. Let nothing be done through what? Selfish ambition. Why? Because it interferes. Or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this thought pattern be in you, which is also in Christ, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Fellowship with the anointing to become like-minded. In other words, your thoughts are parallel as our identity in the anointing. In the mind of the new man. Fellowship with the anointing to become like-minded. You know, the, if you never ever notice, the more you hang around with a person, you become there becomes an exchange of character. You know, you think about a turtle. Man, the turtle's head's looking; he's walking around. But when, as soon as he senses trouble, where does he go? in because he's protected oh you think about that he goes in and he waits and discerns until danger is gone and then he creeps out his little head and man how many times have i've seen turtles flying across the street because somebody would catch the tire of it and it would, it would fly like a flying saucer and he's inside, you know. I don't want to see him crushed. I'm almost run off the road many times, avoiding the hitting the turtle. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, they're not the fastest animals in the world, you know. They have to have a hard show. James 4, verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in you, in your members, in your flesh, in your soul? You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant do not obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask amiss that you're going to spend it on your flesh. Pleasures, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that fellowship with the outer world is enmity with God? Do y'all don't see this? The outer world. There's a difference between the outer world and the inner world of the spirit. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? You want to grieve the Holy Spirit? Do stuff that causes them to get jealous. But he gives more grace, which is God's plan. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. He what? He resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. So you got to understand that being prideful and arrogant will grieve the spirit and cause dullness to your inner sense of discernment. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The inner fight between the old man flesh and the new man spirit and their inner desires and sense of discernment. There's a battle with it. Pride moves to nullify 
your inner discernment, your inner sense of discernment. It moves to nullify your inner sense of discernment. But being humble moves to glorify Christ in you. I want to say that again because it's very important. Pride moves to nullify your inner sense of discernment. It wants to dull it. You know, when you, th when you think it's, you know, pride isn't always just arrogance and area. Pride is rejecting God's influence. It's rejecting his impression. No. That's what I want to do. Well, you know, you should be, you stop looking there. No, it's what I want to do. That's pride. David said, I won't lay anything before my eyes. Why are you distracted? Pride. It's allowing it to happen. Does everybody get it? See, the enemy's always knocking to get your attention. How many times have we missed something? Man, let me tell you something that I saw today. I was, I'm, I'm, okay, so the crossing guard comes out. I stop. And he's letting the kids go. And this guy comes out of the parking lot, goes in front of me, doesn't see that I'm, I'm stopped. He's got a stop sign anyways. He goes through the stop sign, it turns left, and almost runs over the parking, the, uh, the crossing guard. And the crossing guard runs out of his way. I said, man, where's the cop now? And you know what's on? He's on his phone. Not paying his attention of nothing. Nothing. Watching his phone. And, and the crossing guards, his uh, stop things up in the air like he's running. I wish I had this on camera. I'm thinking, what a moron. Totally distracted. Totally distracted. And, and the crossing guard was just, he was baffled. I think he was in shock. He was running for his life. Got the last kid across, and all of a sudden, whoa! <laughs> this guy was not paying any attention at all. Thank God it wasn't me. He had a stop sign on the back of his window. Hallelujah. Anyways, again, I want to share this. That inner man between, the, the inner fight between the old, the old man flesh and the new man spirit, their inner desires and, and sense of discernment, there's that battle. Remember, pride moves to nullify that inner sense. Again, pride is anything that says no to God's impression, to God's influence. It says no. That's pride. So pride isn't always something that you see outwardly. It's inwardly first. It says no. And then it begins to nullify that sense of discernment. But humility, humbleness moves to glorify Christ in us. Ephesians 4.29. That's why many people have a form of godliness, but deny the power. That, that is denying the submission to God in every area of their life. They're no, they're no longer really living for the Lord. But there's an outward expression that they're living for the Lord, but the inward is there's no sense of discernment. There's no sense of discernment. Doesn't the Bible say that their conscience becomes seared? Amen. There's no inner sense of discernment it, it, it's gone for so many people and people that are ignoring all the events and everything that's going on with right now they just are ignoring it oh well, everything's gonna be fine it's like until the flood hits your front door then oh no preparation because there's no inner sense of discernment god tells you things to come he warns us, be careful you don't follow this through. Be care Does everybody get this? He warns us. There's an inner sense of, sense of discernment. What's right, what's wrong, what's God's timing, what's not God's timing. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.29. For no one, 
Uh, hold on a second. That's not it. Here we go. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. In other words, do not grieve the anointing. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger, clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit, the anointing. You will begin to lose that inner sense of discernment. Or it becomes get dull. In other words, it's, it, it, I, I can only explain it as like, uh, just like the scales that grow back on. It becomes, it becomes shelled. It, it, it's hard to discern then. It's hard to receive. It's hard to hear. It's hard to uh, understand God's impression. You know, God speaks more of an impression than anything else. That inner sense of discernment is called knowing. There is a knowing that you know, that you know, that you know. Now, there's a lot of people that would lay their lives down on some of the things they know, even, even when they were wrong. <laughs> I'll lay my life down. Oh, really? You're going to lose it. Hebrews 5, verse 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of what? Hearing. Ooh. For though at this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again. The first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes of only milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. In other words, his inner sense of discernment hasn't been matured yet. Does everybody understand that? But solid food belongs to those who are full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their what? Senses exercised to discern both good and evil. That's that inner sense of discernment. In other words, we can recognize it outside. Hello? But recognizing it on the inside before it even happens on the outside it's different because and the inside he's telling you things to come today many have been become dull in the inner sense of discernment allowing the outer senses to dictate the inner sense and first corinthians chapter 2 Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the anointing teaches or the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. In other words, when you judge something, you're discerning it. Amen? That's that sense, inner sense of discernment. You're not committing judgment on it. 
you are just judging them. You're determining that's judging. A, ju a dis discernment is to judge. You are judged. You're not condemning someone, but you're making a final solution of what is what. Is it good or evil? Is it of God, not of God? Is it God's timing or not God's timing? That's why the Bible says test all things. Test the spirits. Test things. Amen? For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of the anointing, the mind of Christ. Spiritually discerned is the inner sense of discernment. It's our witness within us. It even gives, it confirms things. It's what we call the knowing inside of you. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. It says, then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name or focus on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern. If he's telling them again, that means they did it once and they lost it. Amen? Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Again, a servant, there, look at, we should be able to, I, I, I'm trying to make this in a, in your inner sense of discernment, you'll know somebody that is a servant of the letter or a servant of the spirit. You'll know it. No matter what the outward says, no matter what the works are, you'll know whether they're a servant of the letter or a servant to the Spirit. That's that inner sense of discernment that will let you know. And it doesn't, it doesn't, and it, it's, it's not a, a, what's it for? It's for you to be protected. Does everybody understand it? That means you can't trust the words. Listen, trust is earned. Amen? Just don't trust everybody. Trust is earned. We earn God's trust. Amen? We earn it by being obedient, by being humble. When you get that inner sense of discernment, God can trust you more. I, I Really, you should be able to discern a person of the letter or a person of the, you know, by the inner sense of discernment, one who serves the Lord and one who serves the, or one who serves the letter, one who serves the Spirit. In Matthew 13, and again, this doesn't make a person bad. Does everybody understand that? It's not about a person bad. It makes a person deceived. And if a person is deceived, you can't fully trust them. Does everybody get this? Isn't deception Satan's greatest weapon? So if a person has a, even, a, even that area of deception in their life, that person, you can't trust them until they can earn, earn your trust. They have to earn it and not make the same mistake over and over and over Until that inner sense of discernment becomes more mature. What's that? That inner fellowship between that your spirit and the Holy Spirit, the anointing. That's why the Lord established nine months in the program, in the discipleship. Why? It's a sense of birth. And man, we need aftercare, that's for sure. Verse 11, Matthew 13. That's why it's called aftercare. <laughs> Is everybody there? Matthew 13, verse 11. Let's speak it together. 
And Jesus answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has to him, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. Why? Because the inner sense of discernment is in a high enough level to un interpret. For the hearts of this people have grown what? Dull, hard-hearted. Their ears are hard of hearing. Their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. It sounds like today's events all over the world. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see, and did not see it. And hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Many have lost the inner sense of discernment because of hard-heartedness, rebellion, stubbornness, pridefulness, and have missed many opportunities of healing and blessing. Remember, when the heart becomes dull, the inner man, that innerness becomes dull, it is dulling the, it is the loss of discernment. It begins to dull it. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You know, I'm, I, you've heard me talk about detail. There's not enough detail now. No, the lack of detail. Spiritual detail. Hallelujah. I get... Um, I get a lot of things that brought brought to my attention, especially some videos. Man, it's a great video. It's really spiritual, this, that, whatever. I'll put that video in and start watching. I'm like, Phew, done. Can't handle it. Why? My inner sense of discernment is saying, this is a bunch of crap. Believe me, when I first, when, when, when I first began to wa watch Matrix, I had to shut it off. And Lord said, "Put that back on." I said, "Lord, I, I, I," he said, "You don't think I've heard all those words? They don't mean nothing to me. It's the intent of the heart that means something to me." So I put it back on and watched it. And he said, "Watch it through your spiritual eyes, and not your physical." And as I began to watch it through my spiritual eyes, and my sense of discernment began to grab hold of things, now I'm like, "Whoa, this is intense." What a flick. I mean, they're really telling the truth. We need to red pill everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, we do live in the matrix. And think about this. When your inner sense of discernment becomes mature, you live in another reality. You're no longer living, the outer world is no longer, at, I mean, it's there, but you can leave at any moment. It's just there. Because the inner world of the spirit is so more real and so, the real reality of it is so awesome that you know. Everything you look at is temporary. This wall is temporary. I can lean up. But it's temporary. Everything is temporary. That's the inner sense of discernment. Everything is temporary here. And the majority of it is all a lie anyway. But with the inner sense of discernment, you will know these things. Hallelujah. Where did I say to go for uh, first? 
Corinthians 1, verse 4. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was what? Confirmed in you. So that you may, you come short of no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Love it. God is faithful by whom you were called into what? Fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The testimony of Christ confirmed within and will confirm all the way to the end. Hallelujah. By the what? Inner sense of discernment in you. Go to uh, chapter 4. You know, because there are people that I know that are believers, and I know they love the Lord. And you know, th there was an inner question of certain things. And, 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 and many of them are faithful and so forth. And I just couldn't understand. And I said, Lord, why? Why? Is it, is it demonic? Is it what's what? He said, no. No. They haven't reached the maturity of the inner sense of discernment. Or they wouldn't fall short of so many things. See, when that is maturing, not that we've reached our level of maturity, amen, because we're always growing. You are not only sold out, but you're about the Father's business. And that's what you all, that's all you want to do. That's all you want to do. Because you're sold out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your servant now. And uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Let's read this together. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ. What's Christ? The anointing. Servants to the what? Anointing. Servants to the anointing. To the service of what? The anointing. Can the anointing be served outside or inside? Inside. With what? Outside manifestation. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. What are the mysteries of God? Hello? They're in Christ, aren't they? And where's Christ? In you. So when you begin to learn how to dig deep inside, you will find other things. That's why it's praying in the spirit is so important. Praying in tongues is so important about. Why? Because it's an inner it's an inner. It's the inner connection with the Spirit of God. It's the inner connection with the throne room of God. It's the inner connection. It's, that's why the mind has nothing to do with it. Amen? It's the inner connection. The mind doesn't understand. So in this inner connection, in the inner connection in the Spirit, as you're praying in the Spirit, what does the Bible say? Your spirit prays. Your what? Spirit prays. Your spirit prays. Now, there's a whole arena of which spirit means breath, so I'm not going to get all of that tonight. But your spirit prays to the Father. You don't understand what you're praying, but there's an exchange. You are praying the mysteries of God. While you're praying the perfect will of God in tongues, to the Father, he's releasing his mysteries into you. There's an exchange. He's releasing answers that are going to be needed. And then the Holy Spirit takes what's been imparted in you and with a sense of discernment releases them in time, in God's time, for his purpose, for his will. Does everybody get that? Anybody get it? Praise God. 
Hello, verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. That's full of faith. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or a human court. Do you understand how Paul was always separating himself from the outer world to the inner world of the Spirit? In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord, because he has an inner relationship. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. Until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. I'm not going to close. <laughs> so we are servants of the anointing by the inner fellowship of the Spirit of God. Remember to judge is also to discern. I'm going to close the Proverbs too. Verse 1, let's speak it. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you. And treasure my commandments within you. So that you incline your ears to wisdom. And apply your heart, which is in you, to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment. And lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver, and search for her as for a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of the just and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness, justice, equity, and every good path. When wisdom enters your heart, knowledge is pleasant to your soul, and discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. All of this is a part of the sense, the inner sense of discernment. That's what he's talking about. Verse 12, to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the path of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked. You know, you think about it. When Obama first came, showed himself, my inner man was so like, Ugh. this man is evil. Why? There was an inner sense of discernment. But see, so many people were sensing on the outward side. They were looking at the first um, uh, black American man, the first, the, what, uh, all the other things and false promises. There was the outerness. Because they were looking at the outer, they couldn't discern the inner world of the spirit with this man. As soon as he stepped up, I said, that man is an antichrist. And people loved him. It didn't mean, I didn't mean I didn't hate him. I hated what was in him because I could sense it. In fact, at some, at some point I thought he might have been the Antichrist. No. But anyways, I realized he wasn't the Antichrist. He, he is a part of the Antichrist regime, though. And, uh, you know, and, and all the rest of them, you know, you could tell you, there was an inner sense of discernment knowing, man, you could just hear them once and you didn't even have to look at them. You could hear just some of the things that come out of their mouth and the intent of their spirit. See, the Bible says that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. That cannot be done without your inner sense of discernment activated. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Verse 15. Whose ways are crooked, who are dis divisive in their paths, to deliver you from the immoral woman or man, from the seductress who flatters with their words, who forsakes the companion of their youth and forgets the covenant of their God. 
you know, I was watching, uh, I was listening to something today on YouTube, and one of the things that they, they kept rephrasing, the party, what they called, they were calling the Democratic Party, he says, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in God. They believe they're God. They just don't believe in God. Oh, they believe there's a God, but they don't believe in God. Does everybody get that? They don't believe in God. And you can tell by what they say and what they promote. Amen. Who forgets the covenant of their God. For their house leads down to death and their paths to the dead. None who go to them return, or her, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in a way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness. For the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. We'll continue to see much more exposure. We'll continue to see much more shaking. But you know what? If your inner sense of discernment is activated and growing and maturing, you'll have no fear. You'll have no fear. Amen? You'll just praise God and the Holy Spirit will let you know what's getting ready to happen prepare you for everything. Again, it's a part of growing and maturing. And so many people that are still out there that are 30 and 40 years Christians supposedly have never allowed the inner sense of discernment to mature. Because there really is, because of the grieving of the Holy Spirit, so many people do so many stupid stuff that they keep grieving the Spirit and dullness keeps like dividing and separating the fellowship within. But God is faithful and He's just. And He waits for each and every one. That's why repentance is necessary. <laughs> it's necessary. You repent every day no matter what. If you don't think you did something, you did. You can ask somebody. If you didn't see it, somebody did. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, we look for conviction. Not for guilt or condemnation, but we, wanna, we don't ever want to uh, allow the enemy to sear our conscience with a hardened heart. We want to be sensitive, discerning in every area. It's so important. Especially now. There's so many people that are, are falling short. And they're getting caught up. And they ain't getting caught up to heaven. They're getting caught up in the storms. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask you to protect this seed and mature our inner sense of discernment with you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay blessed.